Hey there, Angie M. Thought I'd just do a chatty video. <laughs> I keep intending to do a plan with me, but for those of you out there who like do full on legit plan with me, I don't know how y'all do it because I plan on the fly and it just does not work for me. So I don't know if I need to have like two of each size so that I can have something where I do all of my normal planning and then like do pretty planning and something else and just show you guys how it works. But you know, it's a thing. So <laughs> what I have here is I have my notes and the reason I have my notes, this is an A6 Sterling Ink notebook. Um, the A6 planner will be just like this for the whole year, which I'm super excited about. I really just wanna be in here now. Like I keep trying to reach for this. It's pretty pointless for me to reach for this right now because like, I, I am an all-in-one planner. I, I just, I don't like multiple planners. I don't like, ooh, this is not gonna come out. I'm, so I'm gonna take the cover off. I'm gonna put this away. We're gonna, we're gonna do something really quick with this because I just, I can't carry it with me because it just makes me wanna use it and try to figure out a way to use it and figuring out a way to use it is not working. I'm gonna keep it in the back pocket as a notebook, but I, I'm i not going to carry it with me. So something I wanna do is I'm gonna take this guy off that I had on the cover. I'm gonna put it on the current planner. I'm okay with the sticker be, being here, not being here, here. I, I have another one. I have another one that I can put on here. But I really like it. I just don't know that I want it on my planner. And something I've also discovered about myself is I really don't like big bulky planners covers on these. Um, the paper is so thin that it really just, it doesn't make for a pleasurable writing experience when I've got a big, big bulky cover on there, when I've got stuff in pockets. I did try with a she my she one of my Chic Sparrow covers and as much as I love it, it just, it, it bulks up along the edge too much. So we are gonna set this guy aside. I cannot wait until I have this for 2024. I will be just the happiest camper in 2024. I'm also, I'm gonna have an A5 that I pre-ordered as well for like a desk calendar. I think with the A5, I will be, I will be very choosy, selecty choosy. Oh, and what you saw first, I did get off of Amazon. So this isn't as long as I thought. It was supposed to be like an, an extra long for a full size keyboard with the number pad. And because I don't use a full size keyboard, I thought I could be slick and also use then one for my mouse. It does not work, but I am very much in love. And I just literally searched like cloud wrist rest. It doesn't, it's memory foam, but it doesn't sink down like my other one. So it's like your hands just rest on this really nice squishy material. And I'm, I'm absolutely down for that. So what I've been using for cover as I digress is the Salty Katie covers. I've talked about this before. Y'all know how much I like these. And they just, they work perfectly with this particular book style. I do out of the back. I want to take these guys. You know, and I bought, I bought those Ace, those A6s for purely for reference purposes so that I could see how I like them and, and I like them. I have a feeling I'm gonna like planning in them because I do every now and then wanna pull out my pocket moleskin daily because I just, I, I really do like that size. Not that this size is annoying me at all. I did also pick up two new tools from cloth and paper. I have the straight and the curved so you know, you, you grab, you put down, it's got a good point on it. I actually kind of like the curved a little bit more with stickers because it just, it's really easy to just place and just go shoop to make sure they're flat. But I digress, I digress. Um, 
yeah, I've changed some things up with some pens I've used, but we'll save that for for another day. I'm just trying to get all the sticky stuff off of the card so I can get the card on here. Let's just do, do, do. So much like I did before, I've got my Tombow Permanent Adhesive, which I can very, very easily rub off things that sound wrong on my channel today. The adhesive part from this particular material, so I do like it. We're gonna sort of aim up here for middle. I don't know how well it's gonna stick to the linen cover. But I absolutely like that everything will be okay from May Paper Co. And while we're at it, I'm just gonna grab this guy from my box because I have some other like clear things that don't really get used anywhere. I like this bloom with grace. So this is from this little case is from May Paper Co. I absolutely I'm loving it. I use it for a lot of stuff. Note to self. I'm going to make you so proud. And then I've got the goals. Oh, guys, did I just, is that the cover? I think that might be my cover. I think that might be my cover. Do a little off center and a little straight up. Ooh, I'm gonna save that Bloom of Grace for somewhere else. I, I really wanna use these and I feel like the cover lends itself to actually being really great. For this, I'm putting down a little more adhesive than I used before, mainly because I want to make sure these stick and they don't start sliding around. All right, I just want that one off centered a little. And this is before we even get into the the chitty chat 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 talk. And I just found that this method worked out so well for me before that it's like I have these things that I want to use and we're going to figure out how to use them. So these both are from May Paper Co. This is from Casaviche. And then Bloom with Grace, I will find another place to use. But there we go. And now I don't have the This Is Fine on there. I think I want to save, because I think it's my last one, I think I want to save that for, for next year in my box. So, oof. Oof. all we do now is we're going to come back and I'm going to get the cover back in place. So this is the A5, which I'm using right now. I have the B6 half year dated as well this is an a5 undated i'm actually liking the a5 turns out after about five seconds of trying to be in in the half okay like i i'm, I'm kind of living for that i kind of like that of being in the hat in the half that i'm really not a half girl i i like the whole year i like the feel of the whole year in my hand and that's just the way she's going to to work right now. If you're curious about what's on my nails, it is Hollow Taco, Hollow Taco in Dead Petals. I did go through and declutter the bulk of my nail polish collection, which had become Hollow Taco, just letting go of the things that I don't actually use. And this is one of my favorites. When I want a dark nail polish that's not black, but is, I'm just gonna call this black adjacent because depending on the lighting you're in, it looks very dark. So, okay. Let's get into into the planner planner things. Um, this is from a paper co. It had the whole year on the back, but I really like the colors. So I sort of vacillate between super duper deluxe, colorful, all of the colors like Shine Sticker Studio. You know, really hits the spot for me for that. But I also like super neutral earthy colors as well. 
which is a whole thing. I did pull out the Stoma Beautiful pen, which matches. Is this, I can't remember if this is from Efflorescence. I can't remember which kit it's from, but it matches my nail polish really well and it's very florally. So I did grab that for use right now. And then I did make some changes. So word of the year, you guys are not going to be uh, seeing me do much desire mapping or talking about desire mapping or the changes. It took me like three seconds to get the, the words of the year. So when I first started doing Danielle Laporte's desire mapping, like I'd listen to the book or I'd read the book and then I'd do the stuff and do the entire workbook and write, I'd be really confused. It was, it was very laborious. But once I sort of got my feet wet with the course and all of that, then it, it's actually become very easy for me and very quick for me to pinpoint how I want to feel, even if I'm having, you know, a, a rougher go of it. So my three words for essentially the rest of the year since I did this in July is energized, alive, and still. And you might be like, those sound like they're in competition with each other. They're really not. So energized and alive uh, is for obvious reasons. I don't feel energized or alive right now with what I'm going through with a new diagnosis of a of a very chronic illness that I can't control so much. Um, yeah, so energized and alive, those two kind of go together, but what about the still? So... Ease and flow have been big words in the past, but they never really quite ring the bell for me. Stillness, though, for me is a big thing. I used to be very good at stillness. I've talked about some of my coping mechanisms, things like compartmentalization, and which I'm starting to realize may actually just be straight out disassociation with me calling it something else. But hey, it, it works for me, all right? So I'm not going to knock it. That said, what I really find in, in thinking back to like when I was a kid and when I needed time and I needed space, what I really needed was stillness, physical stillness, the ability to go and to sit in a dark space with my own thoughts and just let them go. So physical stillness is what I'm referencing here. I The need to be able to harness that chaotic internal energy and not have it become a physical manifestation, which happens to me quite frequently. If I am feeling, you know, why am I blanking on the word? Restless, restless, that's the word. So when I, I find when I'm feeling super restless mentally, it does, it does go running into the physical as well. my husband and I'm not sure if he's coming this way so really finding that that stillness um, a big part of that also factors in with the drive for needing of the physical movement and stuff with with dealing with what I've got going on in my body as well is that I have to be able to reacclimate and be okay with being still All right, and then I've got just this daydreaming page here. I was playing with some stamps. The ink takes an ungodly amount of time to dry. It's not my favorite, but you'll see some pages where there are things that, that work and I do like it more in the, in the setup in here where it works. I have a checklist, I'm not sure how many use it yet, but it's there. And then sort of dedicating some main player space on some front pages for my diagnosis and just some, some fun things. So, you know, I, chronic illness has kind of been a thing adjacent in my life, not, not really affecting me, but affecting people around me. So I, I knew a little bit about what, potentially what I was getting myself into in terms of dealing with doctors and nurses and multiple practitioners and and just trying to wrap it all up with a nice little bow. And I, I know that I have to work very hard to advocate for myself and just be on my game at all times and not allow anyone to make me feel like 
I'm coming from let's just call it medical gaslighting because that really is what that really is what it is so I had a diagnosis and I've talked about this before and then there were some changes and I thought it had to do with the insurance and I'm still not approved for a medication and I have been an active flare-up so active inflammation what I am now diagnosed with is non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. So, NR AXPA, RAXPA is what I'm gonna call it. I know it's not what everybody else calls it, but I'm trying to like I'm trying to get it stuck in my brain and it's not sticking. So this is sort of like the precursor to ankylosing spondylitis, and ankylosing spondylitis is like where my pelvis starts to fuse to my spine. My ribs start to fuse to my spine. My spine starts to fuse itself all up, right? It's, it's, a, it's a significant deterioration and loss of range of motion, but basically what it all boils down to for both of these is chronic active inflammation of the spine and sacroiliac joint. So, some things that I had happen, and I've got notes in my hand, so that's, and that's why, that's why, I, you know, the medical gaslighting started, and I told the story about trying to deal with insurance and pre-approvals in different departments within a medical facility, and then a doctor's nurse to get things essentially sorted out and squared away so we could move forward, and being told that I was never diagnosed with AS, that I was only ever diagnosed with this, so that it was always the diagnosis and being like, I'm looking at the doctor's notes on reports and, you know, on imaging saying it's AS. That we suspect it's AS, we're gonna treat for AS and prescribing a medication that specifically treats for AS. And then all of a sudden it changes. And it, ca it wreaked havoc and caused confusion because insurance didn't understand what was going on and needed clarification and weren't getting the clarification that they needed and it meant a change in medication which didn't match the diagnosis that insurance was given so it's a whole thing ultimately what happened is and i have this in writing is oh no, no you were originally diagnosed with as but it changed you know, and I was just like, okay, well, please make sure when you appeal the declination of the medication for the NR AXPA that, you know, it's clearly clarified that the diagnosis changed. You know, and I was being told that, you know, no one ever said it was AS. And, and it's like, well, I didn't prescribe myself a medication and send it to my, my insurance. So my insurance has this information too. So it's not just me. And I'm just... I. I need to find a new provider. So I need to be on the search for a new provider for this because my doctor's nurse is just like, like I can't. And even my husband was like, you need to call, um, um, find a manager or find the department that works with like customer complaints. And you need to, you need to complain, like you need to complain about this. Like, cause I'm explaining what's going on. I'm explaining to him, you know, like literally what I have access to and what I'm seeing. And, he, and he's like, it, you know, just, it's, it's not okay. For me, I don't even want to, I just don't even want to deal with it. Like it, I just need to find a new doctor. And then I had something, so it, there are a lot of peripheral symptoms with this. It messes with the GI, it can mess with breathing, depending on what's going on in your body and the inflammation and the impact on your lungs, but it messes with all of your joints. So it's inflammation that hits all of the joint groups. It can cause pins and needles feeling. It can cause, because it the inflammation impacts nerves. So it can cause all this other really nasty, painful stuff that can make it hard to walk. It can make it hard to hold things. It really affects my hands, which are still swollen. My feet are still kind of swollen. That never completely goes away at this point. I have a feeling that the birth control I am on in the form of an IUD, which which was relatively recent, is causing a perpetuation and a worsening of the inflammation. So we're gonna get that tackled. And we're gonna quit messing with my hormones. It's a whole thing. I know we're, we're, we're kind of getting into the weeds on this, but I just want you to understand where the rest of the planning is going at this point for me. 
So I've got that going on and I just wanted to update the doc, you know, I just sent, sent through tech because every, everything is through messaging, right? I was told that that was the best way to contact the doctor. Like everything's through messaging, which means everything gets gate kept through this nurse who I really don't like because she's done some things to me that make me go, you don't take me seriously. You're trying to gaslight me. You're telling me the sky is not blue when I'm looking up at the blue sky. We're not doing this. Like I will not do, I will not do this dance with a medical provider. Just not going to do it. And so sure enough, I told my husband, I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to send him what's going on with the pins and needles, feelings in my wrists, hands, ankles, and feet, you know, cause it's not my first rodeo with, with a flare up. Unfortunately, it's my first rodeo knowing what the flare up is, but I've been through this before. So I can kind of looking at trends from past flare-ups while not as severe, there really was a way for me that they sort of progressed and then came down. So, okay, I'm like, well, I'm gonna tell them about the pins and needles, which is a thing with this. And I finally get a response back, but the response was basically like, well, did you go to the ER or urgent care? Cause we can have their notes added. And I, I, I wanted to launch my phone because I'm in the app on my phone. That's that's where I'm looking at this. And I wanted to launch my phone across the room because I predicted it. I told my husband, I'm going to send this over, tell them this is going on. And you know what, what I'm going to get back? Well, did you go to the ER or urgent care? First off, even with private insurance, the copay to go to the ER, I will not go to the ER. If it is, if I am not lights and sirens blazing in the back of an ambulance, I'm not going to the ER because the ER is not where you go for, for, for treatment. It's just not. And all the ER is going to do is look at me. I'm going to tell them what's going on, what I'm diagnosed with. And they're going to go follow up with your doctor. They're going to be like, why are you wasting our time? And then they're going to collect a very hefty payment from me that I don't get reimbursed, I don't get it back, I don't get to go back to my doctor's office and be like, well, y'all said they don't cut me a check for that. So no, I'm not going to the ER. And urgent care, why, if I don't need the ER, why am I going to urgent care? I'm not bleeding, it's not a broken bone. If we're worried that like it's nerve damage or something, well, doctor's office, you need to clearly communicate that that's another, that's another huge issue that I'm having right now is the idea of informed consent because I feel like the only in, informed part of this that I am getting is from Dr. Google and resources that I am finding online. Um, I found a pretty good yoga site that deals specifically with AS. I found pretty good website and support groups for AS that give information and help but I feel like a lot of what I'm looking for should at this point be coming from my medical provider. I'm newly diagnosed with this. I don't know what I should be looking for as red flags versus what's normal. What I see as normal online might be normal, you know, for something that's progressed, but is it something I'm supposed to be experiencing again, or is it a red flag? I don't know. And simply telling me to go to urgent care or to go to the emergency room, I'm sorry, that's not medical care. That That's just, that's not, that's like, we're too busy to deal with you. So go, go have another doctor deal with you kind of behavior. And this isn't coming from the doctor. Again, this is literally the nurse. Well, the doctor's out. Did you go to, ER, did you go to the ER or urgent care? I'm not asking for an appointment. I'm literally doing what the doctor told me. The doctor said communicating through messenger was the best way. So I sent a message, just update the chart. I'm experiencing this symptom. I'm trying to tell my doctor what I'm experiencing in real time instead of like putting it on a list somewhere and saving it up for a once a year, or once every three year visit. So yeah, but the big thing with these guys, and again, we're, we're, we're getting there, is the peripheral symptoms, in particular the GI symptoms I'm going through right now. So for me, the big ongoing symptoms that I seem to constantly have are actually GI related. Um, TMI, and I probably should trigger warning to the start of this, so I apologize, but just a TMI, lots, for whatever reason, lots of gas, indigestion feelings, stuff that's really unusual for me. Like if it's a normal day, 
I don't have any of that. And it's been sort of a constant for the last couple of years, which is why GI appointments have become a thing, but GI can't find anything because it's not actually related to the GI. So then I picked up some OTC stuff for that. And I feel like I'm going down this rabbit hole of being on all of this OTC stuff, trying to, trying to symptom manage to make things better. Is there a little bit of pain in my back? Yes, but it's weird. And as, as I said, we're, we're, we're moving along. So it's strange though, because as the pain level goes down, while it takes down some of the stuff with the hands and the feet and yeah, my hand still hurts and occasionally pops weird. And sometimes I have to pop my knuckles to make my fingers want to work right. Whole other story right now. You know, driving hurts, typing hurts, holding a pen can hurt. But like once, once that back pain and the peripheral symptoms in my hands and feet start to go down, okay, that stuff doesn't hurt as much anymore, but then my GI acts up. Like my GI goes nuts. So again, just understanding the patterns. So what I have here is arthritis management. Exercise is huge. And I should preface this with exercise here is not about weight loss. With what I have, it's about mobility. So my weight, which I am overweight, there's no hiding that. It's not some big secret that I'm keeping from myself. It would be advantageous to lose some weight, yes, for, for other reasons, but my weight did not cause this. And I, I just, I feel like I have to, I have to say this very clearly when talking about exercise, particularly as somebody who has danced with disordered eating and all kinds of other things in their youth. So a lot of, a lot of clarity has been gained since this diagnosis. When I feel good, I work out. When I feel good, I buy exercise equipment. I buy weights. I buy the treadmill that's behind me. When I feel good, exercise is easy and it's part of, a normal part of my life. When I don't feel good and I haven't felt good in many years, I don't exercise. So it looks like this really weird thing, you know, and my, my husband was saying, you know, making fun of, Oh, you know, you're the treadmill, but you don't use it. And it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't understand it. I don't use it because it hurts. So what I am learning with this new diagnosis is really what the limits are and that the way I exercise and the way I approach things has to be different. And the goal of exercise now is mobility and keeping things loose and trying to keep things flow in and move in the way it's supposed to and trying to avoid stuff fusing. Sedentary is bad because changes to the posture and really increasing the risk of stuff having the opportunity to start to fuse and lose mobility. Okay, so that's where that comes from. So I got used up trying to save stuff and it feels like the impossible Sisyphean task. And then just how I want to feel energized, alive, and still. I have no idea how to work that into the goals. I I really don't in terms of a weekly standpoint. I Sterling Inc. directly on YouTube has videos where like this is filled in, and I know other people do it, and I really I admire those of you who like have this solid plan. I don't have a solid plan. My brain hurts when I think about some of this stuff because I just, I don't know. And for those of you who've been on this channel for a while, you know that plans for me have at times fallen through or just sort of been escapades into failure because either I'm setting goals that are way outside of what I can expect to do or I have a, like right now, I'm in flare up and it wildly changes what I want to be able to do and expect to be able to do from what I can actually do. So capacity, capacity changes significantly and I need to just regroup and figure out what exactly that means and how to handle it. So here I am tracking more or less like a symptom tracker and I'm not filling in the next months because I wanna give myself room to be able to change what I track and what is important based on what I'm actually experiencing. So what I'm finding is when the pain level in my back is high, the swelling is high, the tiredness is higher. Although I have to admit the tiredness actually seemed more when the pain level went down, but I don't know what's that the, the tiredness went 
up in core. I don't know if there's a correlation there. I think what it is, is starting to feel better. It's like I slammed into this wall where I'm so tired, my body's so exhausted and I need time to be able to reset in between intense pain and less pain. Like I just, like I need a pot, like my brain doesn't work. Like my brain just stopped working because it was like, I should feel good. I should be running around. And I don't know if it's fear that it, it's not over and that it's immediately gonna come back and it's just like a spoof and I'm gonna get a day and that's gonna be it. I don't know if it's that now that I understand the idea of overdoing it with this, that I'm afraid that I'm just gonna jump in with both hands and do stuff and overdo and, and just kick off a cycle. I'm figuring that out. But with pain high, joint pain's high, it affects more body areas. My elbow on my right arm oddly hurts, but not my left. My right seems more affected than my left, but that makes sense because the actual pain in my back is more on my right than my left. You know, hitting hands, hitting feet. Um, spine, I just included spine because I can feel it in my cervical spine as well. Part of it is is the posture, the hunched posture that I have started to take on where I feel hunched over my desk that I thought was a result of the pain is actually a part of what this diagnosis is and a part of what happens. So I really have to start watching my posture much more critically so that I'm not slumping into my shoulders and leaning over. And then hip pain, hips are a huge thing and I've noticed with my hips that I do get where it feels like, I don't know how to describe this because I've never experienced it. It started around pregnancy and has never gone away. You know, where stuff starts to loosen up, but it, feel, it feels like tendons and stuff get hung up or like lock up and then you have to unlock them. I get that, only it's different and it's worse. So part of the inflammation affecting the joints, it affects the connective tissues, it affects other things. So yeah, so it's a thing I'm trying to track. So I, as you can see, like I had pain spikes and then it kind of goes back down. What I'm almost wondering looking, looking at this is I think I'm causing the pain spikes to a certain extent. So what I bet happened is I get a good day, a high day, I have what seems to be a better day. And then all of a sudden I'm up here and I'm looking at this that makes no sense, that's a Tuesday. I didn't, that's the, you're just uh, you're witnessing my brain do uh, one of those things. So the fourth felt good. I was up and around and more mobility is good and I do tend to have less pain, but it all comes crashing down afterwards. And this is what I mean by the easy to overdo. So my husband, when we were talking about that, he's like, I don't get it. He's like, you walk two blocks. Now, granted, I walked more than two blocks and I was on my feet much more than that, which is supposed to be a good thing. But what feels good at the time when you overdo it, you don't realize you're overdoing it until you actually sit down and rest. And quite frankly, that night for sleep was pretty bad. Waking up was pretty bad. And then I had some pretty ugly pain in my hands in particular. I Saturday and Sunday, I don't know why I have that as a six. I, I, I'm also trying to track another space, which you'll see in a moment, what I'm actually experiencing because while for my back it might've been a six, my hands, my right hand more than my left, were just like, I would wake up and I curl my hands weirdly to my body like this. My thumbs are oddly not affected. Like, I think it's the oddest thing where they're, for whatever reason, they seem exempt joint-wise from what goes on with the rest of the fingers. But especially these two, like even just trying to, and you can't see it today because it's very, like, I should be able to move my pinky more independently than that because I do work on that. But like trying to move this finger was completely like locked with my pinky. Like I'd try to move it and my pinky would be like, nope, I'm going to. So lots of weird things, a ton of pain, just really awful pain. And that's not, that's not to downplay the pain in my feet. It's just, I'm so used to my feet kind of taking the brunt of pain from injuries that I've had growing up and in the past to my ankles that I guess I just don't think about them the same way I think about my hands. <coughs> Sorry, as I cough. 
And a lot of this is just, it comes down to what I'm used to. So also I'm trying to be very cognizant of the fact that when I put a lower pain, it might not actually be lower pain. I do tend to become blind to it. So like it's bad, but I don't, I'm just used to it. So it doesn't hit the same way. Taking a drink to stave off some coughing. So like it's before noon right now, today. And what I will say is I am no longer at a four, it's Tuesday. I am no longer at a four, it is ratcheting back up. So I try to wait till the end of the day to fill this in too. It is ratcheting back up and it's not ratcheting back up. I was careful yesterday because I wanted to just sort of test and see if I don't overdo it, if I don't push, and by push I mean at, you know act and move like a normal human being, what it would do. So what seems to be happening is stuff seems to kick off and then pull back. But I did have a lot of gas, like really intense gas, which I tried to write there because some of the stuff seemed like it was less. It wasn't that it's not there, it was just less. So I, I forgot to mark any of this down for Sunday. This is what happens when I forget to actually sit down and do this. So like, I'm having a hard time in categorizing, like maybe I need to start doing, maybe I need a number system for all of this, for each of this instead of the dots. Like I, because I'm always experiencing it, it's just to what level. And I think it would be interesting to see if the levels of experiencing it change depending on like if I have a high pa overall pain level right coming from coming from my back if I have a, a high overall pain level what exactly is in pain if my hands are way in pain but my shoulders aren't what does that mean because my sh my shoulders my shoulders kind of can be in a lot of pain or in no pain there's my shoulders right now are in all or nothing my knees, however, are not. And for years, I blamed that on some injury and then a car accident and injury from that. But I'm wondering how much of my knees are actually the inflammatory response. And from that car accident, the more I learn about what my body is doing, the more I realize, yes, I had injury in the car accident. The car accident also kicked off. Kicked off a nice little, uh, nice little flare up for me. I get angry when I think about it because I get angry about the specialist that I saw for my knees who told me I was going to have to just get used to the swelling in my lower legs because I was forever going to have it and realizing that the swelling in my lower legs probably had absolutely nothing to do with the injury from the accident and everything to do with a flare up. All the times where I where I've had a flare up and I've seen doctors for things and no one's caught it even though they're going, well, it doesn't really match with what's going on. Well, this symptom doesn't really match with what's going on. Well, this symptom doesn't really match with what's going on, but we're not gonna do any other testing. We're not gonna do MRIs. We're not gonna figure it out. Those were all missed opportunities for getting a proper diagnosis and treatment that maybe I wouldn't be at the level I'm at now, right? Oh, okay, so I digress. So this is just me trying to figure it out. So on the fifth, I was shaky too, pins and needles in the hands. Yeah, so it started after the 4th. Okay, so I had one sort of good day where I was up and about and then my body punished me. And I know I'm not supposed to think of it that way. I know I'm not supposed to think of it as my body punishing me, but let's be honest, that's literally what is happening is my body's like, no, you need, you, you, you need, you need to figure this out and you need to do the right things. But I'm not going to tell you what the right things are because I can't really talk to you outside of, hey, you're in pain. And then you're gonna feel better because you maybe you did some of the right things and rest is not always rest is not the right thing with this. But maybe you did some of the right things, so it's, so now you're gonna momentarily feel better, but then it's all gonna spiral out of control because you're gonna overdo it because you have no idea where the limit is. And I'm not gonna tell you where the limit is. I'm just gonna let you overdo it and then kick you. <sighs> it's a thing. But again, that's why all this tracking comes into play because I need to be able to understand my body. All right. So I've got the monthlies. I'm not really changing anything on the monthlies because like, what's the point? I mean, these will just get all filled up and 
incoherent. So where I'm doing some of the changes and what I love is seeing some of the spreads where people aren't really using this part, but use it more like log and all that other stuff. But I also have all these pages here that I think I'm gonna use more towards that end as well. So I just started writing some stuff down and I'm going to start with keeping it on the day and then I'm going to move into, maybe if I change up the spread like how I've seen some others do, working it through that way. Oh, it's a god. Trying to keep the list of things to do. I actually, some people have said that they completely ignore the timeline and they actually just put like the important stuff down. I can see that, I feel that, I get that. I like the idea of it. I just need to figure out if that is what is going to work for me. I do like the idea of this stuff being up at the top instead of at the bottom though. So just working through with that. And again, you can see that I've, I've planned pretty much out to August. And that is where we started to hit my stamps. So I wanted to just play around what I used. So we've got some caps, we've got some lowercase and then some caps. And then I thought, let's be cute and let's try some numbers. And what was so cute about the numbers is I'm like, I don't have a number nine in the box. And then my brain just went, hey, hey, dumbass. You know what six is, right? When it's turned upside down? Yeah, you got nine. I don't know how long I've had those. I, I don't recall how long I've had those stamps, but yeah, that was fun. That was fun. That was delightful. So I mean by the brain not totally firing. So yes, this is me again, just trying to like plan some things out, do some things in a different way and get a feel for what I really like more so because next year's going to be dated, right? So this part will be dated, but back here on the blank pages, it won't be. So I'm just playing with some things to see what I like. And again, takes an inordinate amount of time for this stuff to dry. So this is not something I film because it would basically either be me having to edit down <laughs> or like, let's just sit and chat, which I actually realized would work. So here I was playing with, I was using Rewind. So because I'm only using this for half of the year, and it is a whole year, I thought I would try to use these to kind of figure out what I like and try some stamps. I did not let the stamps dry long enough. Again, it takes an inordinate amount of time, but these are some test pages. So I thought I would just like test, do I like, you know, little things? Do I put some notes over here, like the daydreaming? I don't like this at all. I hate, I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> It makes my brain hurt. So no, I don't like that. I, we'll play with some more stuff and see. I really do like the social media, the way I have the social media stuff, the way, the way I have some other things. I was playing with some writing and just taking some notes. Reframe, reframing a life in pain, I feel like is super important because again, sitting down and looking at the reality of my life and, and things that I didn't have explanations for or didn't understand or felt like it was kicking the crap out of me. I now have a better understanding of, and if I can start reframing some things and saying, okay, at this point in your life, when you were feeling X, Y, Z, it was really this, this was what was really going on. Let's take what we learned from that experience. Only now let's apply it through the lens of knowing that you have this, this chronic illness and that this is what it does. Because if we can learn from the past, can't change the past, can't fix the past, past is in the past. But if we can learn from it moving forward, maybe we can make things better. And that's that's where I am, July, money-wise. I, I don't know. I feel like all this does is set me up for failure. I really do. I really admire the channels that do like the cash stuffing and the, you know, everything's in cash and I save. Like, let me just, let me out not getting enough air and take let me just like clap for y'all because y'all are amazing and I love you and you're fantastic I can't do it I don't my brain just doesn't work that way and then just like logging logging stuff so I have for for this week and then I decided something I was going to do because I didn't know how I was going to use these like the Hobodichi week style but I decided that that was a great way to do like a body log because again, I have a whole year worth of pages. There's technically a page a day. Is there more than a page a day? There might be more than a page a day. No, it's a page a day. 
yeah so you can have like a page a day if you really wanted to do a page a day so I have extra pages to play with layouts and to play with tracking and I decided fuck it I'm just gonna make it look pretty and make myself feel better because trying to keep it very minimalistic and stuff was just it felt like sadness to me it really did so where I was trying to keep it all very neutral tone and you know black ink every time I looked at it I was just like that is sadness like that is that is take what I'm feeling and put it on the page and we're not doing that this is my space to be creative to be inspired to put down thoughts ideas notes to track things to have room for growth and as much as I do like a neutral right as much as I do like a good beautiful neutral for me joy is color it, it just is it's color so we're gonna stick with that and I'm gonna roll through with that and then I did oh existential crisis of dread 2023 edition yeah so these these are from villa beautiful um some deco stuff but yeah i was just like i i'm finding that the more the more i start rethinking some things that have gone down in my life and that i've thought or i've felt or or whatnot the more i run into certain topics and things the more i'm finding that if i if I recognize that I was in pain or it wasn't a great time in my life because of what was going on, that what really ends up happening, really ends up happening is I start realizing that I've spent a lot of my life denying being in pain. Oh, I'm just angry. Oh, I'm just unfriendly. Oh, I'm just unlikable. Oh, I'm just this, I'm that. No, I was in pain. And instead of being able to admit I was in pain and needed help, I was trying to do everything and be everything and not let a single thing fall through the cracks or slip through the cracks because if I admit I'm in pain, that's weakness. It's kill it was killing me. It's still killing me because I still in many ways live my life that way is, you know, it's weakness and you can't be weak, can't be weak. Oh no, can't be weak, can't show weakness. And I'm just at an age where... I'm just gonna leave it there like that. Or I'm kind of like, just screw it. Like, what is the what is the point in driving myself into the ground and being miserable? Because no one around me is gonna be happy, right? I'm miserable. So by extension, I am going to make other people miserable because I am just being a miserable human being who's just gonna get bitter and resentful. Why do that? Why not, why not just why not just live live the awesome life? I wanna see if this fits in here really quick. Why not just live, you know, a, a, nice, a nice, awesome life and call it a day? And that, and that, folks, that boys and girls is my takeaway on that subject. Is everything's going to be okay. We're going to get through it. And on that note, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I will catch y'all in the next one.